The story begins by introducing us to a fancy restaurant filled with people dining, but it soon turns out to be an auction venue where the guests bid for slaves. For the next candidate, a beautiful silver-haired girl is brought up. As everyone begins bidding, she looks like a girl on a mission so she summons a key, which she uses to set herself free. She moves on to conjure a weapon that she uses against the bidders. In the waiting room, the maid turns out to be an accomplice. She uses her assassination skills to defeat the guards easily. In the hall, Daya continues to go on a killing spree until a man overpowers her. She discovers he is a magic user, but her partner Tart arrives in time to help her. As they get surrounded, Tart buys time for her partner to recite a spell which she uses to blow up the entire place. Outside, they have a lookout named Maha and their leader Lug, who are waiting to clean up after. As the owner of the establishment moves to escape, Lug eliminates her. We are then taken to a modern world, where a man is carrying out an assassination, along with his assistant. When she asks why, he doesn't kill the entire gang. The man explains they have to follow the exact orders given to them. As they prepare to leave, he notices they have been spotted, so they quickly enter the vehicle to escape. As they are being chased, they open fire on the pursuers and they are also being fired back at, thus making their vehicle explode. However, it was all as planned since they set up the car and jumped out as it was being pursued. As they rest on the ground, the man reveals he was born and raised as an assassin, and that is his life purpose. He explains the only reason he brought her, a novice to the field, is because he was ordered to train her. She then argues she isn't a novice, so the man points a gun at her point blank. He reveals it is actually her gun that he took from her without her knowledge. He scolds her, stating only a novice would be trusting enough to let her weapon be taken, even by a partner. As they return to rest, the girl uses the gun to threaten him. However, he is not moved in the slightest. This is because he has already unloaded the gun but she didn't notice. The next morning, Command reaches out to congratulate him on his last mission before retirement. Their fake passport and plane tickets have already been made available to them. On the flight, the plane is suddenly jerked so they are informed it has been hijacked by robbers. But really, the man knows it is a plan to assassinate him. He moves to the cockpit to control the plane which has begun descending. As he stirs, he notices a fighter jet that sends missiles to blast everything to bits. As he dies, he is then transported to another dimension. Here in the other world, he meets a goddess, who tells him he is to be reincarnated into a fantasy world. She explains he has the choice to keep all his memories after being reincarnated. But in exchange, he has to do a very important job. And the job is to eliminate the hero of that world. She explains that 18 years after his reincarnation, the hero would destroy the world, so he has to kill him when he is still 16 years old. With that said, she introduces him to an array of skills that he can choose, so he picks the ones more favorable to him. After, he is sent into the new world, where he is then reborn into the prestigious family called the Tuatha de family. He is named Lug by his father, who pronounces him as his heir. Seven-year-old Lug with his goal in mind, has already begun training in the woods. He doesn't allow the rabbits he hunts to be prepared by Esri, his mother. This is because he wants to build his body with a proper diet, as he learned from his previous life. Later, Lug goes to a secret room where his father inspects his body, as he poses in different forms as is their family's method. Their family is openly the most renowned medical family in the country, and also a secret assassination family that only takes orders from the royal family to punish nobles who try to bring harm to the country. After the inspection, his father announces it is time to undergo the family surgery. This is an eye modification that allows users to have enhanced eyesight, the ability to see mana, and night vision as well. After the surgery, his doting mother pampers him. Although he isn't thrilled by her nature, he endures it. Later, his bandages are removed. With his enhanced vision, he can view the outstretched land of his family's territory and people from far distances. Later, Lug is dressed as a girl to welcome his new magic teacher as is the custom. When she arrives, he is shocked that his teacher is going to be a child. She notes that Lug might be too young to train but his father assures her he is special. Since she notices Lug perceiving her as a child, she decides to impress him by unnecessarily casting high-level magic. She then introduces herself as Daya Vikon. After the introduction, she informs Lug she would tutor him for two weeks. She hands him a far stone which can store mana. To test his capabilities, she tells him to pour his mana into the stone. It begins glowing but Lug starts to overdo it. She freaks out since the amount of mana he has is abnormal. This makes the stone crack so she tells him to throw it away as quickly as possible. Shortly after, the stone explodes, causing a massive impact on the surrounding area. When Cyan and Esri arrive at the scene, Daya tries to pin the incident on herself thinking they would be mad at Lug. Instead, when they hear he caused the explosion, they are extremely proud of his capabilities. The next day, she uses the far stone to test for his magic attribute. When he feels it with mana, she tests for fire which works, 
Next, she tries for water which works too. Although surprised, she tries for earth which he registers too. She then tries for wind so it turns out he has four magical attributes. With Daya guiding him, Lug begins his mana training. He is thrown into a feeling where she makes him connect with his mana. After that, a new spell pops into his head but when Daya tells him to recite it, he can't read the words. She then shows him an example of a spell. So Lug copies her spell although it isn't the same since he can't recite the words properly. When Lug begins practicing his spell, Daya applauds his improvement. Lug then suggests he tries casting a spell transcribed by her. And surprisingly it worked. With this, they can differentiate the little difference in each spell. With this new knowledge, Lug leads her to write a spell to conjure gold. However, when she casts it, she is drained instead. So Lug decides to try it himself and he succeeds. Later, Lug succeeds in conjuring a rifle using magic. Daya can also copy the spells he transcribes easily. Next, he makes a cannon which when fired, causes a massive explosion that makes Daya freak out. At night, Daya reveals their two weeks have sadly come to an end. Lug makes a special alloy blade which he hands to her as a symbol of their friendship. To return the favor, Daya also hands him her precious magic stone. Later, Cyan, his father, takes Lug to a prison where he tutors him on the art of killing. He then leads Lug to a room where he is to perform his first kill. The inmate begins begging to be spared so Cyan states all her crimes which she makes excuses for. When Lug slightly injures her, she changes her tune and begins swearing at him. So he finishes her off. Elsewhere, a child collapses after having been abandoned by her poor parents. She tries desperately to survive but has gained the attention of a pack of wolves. In town, Lug and his parents interact with the people of the land they rule over in love. Meanwhile, Lug searches for people with high mana compatibility but finds an old man. Later, he broadens his search for a potential skilled assistant with mana. Some weeks later, when he heads out to hunt, he tracks a pack of wolves only to find them surrounding a little girl. He then moves to defend her. On the ground, he begins killing each wolf in detail making sure they all die as quickly as possible. Lug then treats her to a meal since he noticed she is starving. Lug strikes a deal to take her, in exchange that she would faithfully help him with his work. After accepting, she reveals her name is Tart so Lug welcomes her. Meanwhile, it is revealed the goddess previously summoned a special force elite as a reincarnate to slay the hero. When she checks his progress, he has become a neat with no plans of becoming a fighter. Some years later, Tart has begun serving a 12 years old Lug as her master. In the training room, Tart strips so Lug can begin inspecting her as she poses for the different forms. Lug has trained her into a perfect assistant for his own benefit. Lug notes that her only flaw is that she can only use a spear. She tries to train with a knife but she is terrible at it so he interrupts her training. He accepts the fact that she can't use a knife so he conjures a foldable spear for her. With this weapon, her combat ability is boosted incredibly. By analyzing the one he got from Daya, Lug has begun storing far stones filled with mana which he plans to use as weapons. Later, Cyan reveals it's time for his final test before he is acknowledged as a full-fledged assassin. For this test, Lug is to fight him. The assassination test in the woods then begins as the two assassins finally encounter each other. As they battle, Lug's leg is crushed by his father so he quickly retreats to heal himself. Despite having assassination skills from two lives, Cyan leads him into a trap which turns out to be a decoy to allow an attack from behind which Lug only manages to evade. They then continue to clash blades but Cyan retreats into the shadows again. Lug decides to draw him in so in a short while, Cyan sends an attack from the right and after a time interval, another from the left. But Lug has seen through the feints so when he descends from above to strike, the fight is over with Lug being the victor. After he passed, Cyan goes on an assassination while being accompanied by Lug. They go together as they assassinate various nobles by utilizing various means. His father reveals the next stage in his advancement is to build a fake identity as a merchant who would have access to wealthy nobles. Illig Balor is his new identity and he is to train for two years as the son of the Balor merchant family. During his Sanfort party, Rana from the branch family makes a scene since he doesn't approve of Lug who is younger than him to become the next family head. He claims he is stronger so Cyan makes him agree to acknowledge Lug if he wins a duel. When they are told to fight, Lug already has him at his mercy before he can move. Although the fight is over, however, he is still dissatisfied so he attacks Lug who spins him like a lightweight and breaks his arm with a grip. Outside, he makes Rana feel less embarrassed by revealing he defeated his father also. He then hands him a sword and proposes they work together when the time comes. Lug, now a Lig Balor along with Tart now live in Miltu, he dyes his hair to change his appearance. In town, a girl named Maha works as a tour guide along with her friends to raise money to survive. However, when it begins raining, they have to take cover so they aren't able to earn much. As they relax, some thugs come to capture them. Maha uses her mana to create an opening for her friends to escape. 
Despite their efforts, the desperate men still manage to capture them all. They are taken to an orphanage where a man called Torin is in charge. Inside, they meet up with the rest of the captured kids. They are given limited supplies which they are to make do with for a week. In the orphanage, they are made to do tedious tasks like laundry and sewing clothes, and anyone who misbehaves or complains is seriously beaten. Just then, a lord arrives at the orphanage and hands the men some money. They make Maha bathe and dress up her friend named Ifa in nice clothes before she goes away with the lord. Afterward, the girls are taken every night to satisfy men until they all break. One night, Noin gets fed up and cuts herself in frustration. Some years later, Maha overhears the owners planning to use her too since she has come of age. So she runs away as fast as she can to an isolated place. Here, she tries to cut herself too but Lug stops her. The girls are introduced to Lug who is visiting as Illig Balor. He then chooses to buy Maha. After he pays, Torn reveals he has to take her after three days. This is because he plans to toy with her before then. At night, as Torin takes her to serve a customer of his for that day, she jumps out of the carriage in desperation. She begins running away but Torin's man catches up with her using mana. As she is recaptured, Lug shows up to save her in time. An angry Torin orders his man to capture both of them to be sold. But when Lug is attacked, he easily overpowers the man and then he makes a move by threatening Torin. Some days later, Mr. Balor, Lug's fake father presents him with a shop to start his trading endeavor. At home, Tard and Maha, who he has adopted as a sister, serve him dinner. As they eat, he reveals he plans to sell cosmetics as well as sweets in his new shop. These goods would let him get close to nobles since this is what they fancy. The next day, he tells his adopted parents his plans for the shop. Although Mrs. Balor doesn't like him since Lug is assumed to be a bastard child, he reveals to her he has made a cosmetic called a moisturizer. So when she tries it on, she changes her perception of him since the moisturizer has made her skin prettier. When she applies her makeup to the moisturizer, it sits on it perfectly and so she gives her approval to the product. A few days later, the name of the cosmetic shop is unveiled as Orna. Since the moisturizer attracts a lot of customers, Lug hires Ma's friends to work as shop attendants. At night, Lug prepares for potential kidnappers sent from rival companies. However, Tart and Maha beat him to it. Together, they torture the assassin slowly until he breaks. Some days later Lug visits Daya in her mansion. Here, they invent and transcribe spells together, while they have fun alone for the rest of the day. As Lug relaxes close to his shop, he notes that his time as a Lake Balor will soon come to an end. Although, he has succeeded in his mission to blend into high society thanks to his cosmetic business. Later, Lug hands the company over to Maha as his assistant manager. Afterward, the workers hand Lug a goodbye present in Goodwill. While Lug and Tart travel back home, he senses danger outside the carriage. It turns out to be a group of wolf monsters so they order the other travelers to hide. Taking the initiative, Tart gets ready as she is charged at. She kills a wolf with a single strike while using wind magic to end the second. The third tries to escape but she throws her spare at it. After the battle, Lug notes that the hero would soon appear since there are now sightings of monsters. At home, Lug is welcomed by his beautiful doting mother. When he meets his father in his study, he reveals he wants to marry Daya someday so his father laughs in surprise. Afterward, he is given his first solo job to assassinate a villainous count as a full-fledged assassin. At home, Ma has provided information about their assassination target who is the ringleader for a hard drug called Visine Distribution. Later, they are invited to a party hosted by the target. Here, all the women are excited since Lug brought his new product using his merchant identity. He meets up with the Count who takes a liking to him since she brought products that make his wife happy. A few days later, Lug arrives at the mansion to carry out his assassination alongside Tart. He uses his special vision along with his rifle to snipe the Count from afar. Later, Mara reveals she has found the divine treasure he asked for. The divine treasure found is a magic spear called Gibalg. However, it is owned by a man called Satante Magnes who is supposedly the hero. Furthermore, she reveals that a civil war has broken out in the kingdom where Dyer resides and her family has been ordered to join the war effort. The worst part is that the hero is part of the enemy's forces. The next day, he visits Daya but she puts on a strong front and tells him he has nothing to worry about. They then decide to go on a date so Daya dyes her hair to match Lug's. Later, they have lunch together so Daya notes Lug's cooking tastes better than that of the restaurants. After the date, as Lug heads back home, it is revealed the entire civilians were actually soldiers who put on a last show for Daya before she heads to war. When Lug gets home, he finds an injured man being treated by Cyan. He reveals to Lug that the man is a client who has hired him. Cyan then adds that he wants Lug to carry out the assassination of which the target is Daya Vicom. Seeing Lug's shock, he informs him he can decline the job but Lug has some questions. When he asks why they are meddling in another country's affairs, Cyan explains that since House Vicom lost the war, 
Some nobles are after Daya. This is because of her noble blood as well as her knowledge of magic. Daya has also agreed to this since it will stop further fighting but the people of her town have formed a rebel army to stop the arrangement. He adds that the real client is Daya's father and what he really wants is for Lug to pretend to kill Daya as that is the only way to save her. Lug then accepts the job and heads out with Tart who chooses to transport him halfway using her mana so he can save his for fighting. After a while, her wind magic breaks apart from mana depletion. So Lug continues the journey on his own leaving behind Tart who sobs bitterly. Lug arrives at the battle area where the Vicone mansion is surrounded by enemies eight times larger than their forces. After observing, Lug begins sniping the commanders one by one so the army is wary and retaliates. By placing far stones on arrows, Lug sets off powerful explosions in the enemy camp. This invigorates the Vicone forces so they fight back more. Using sound detection, Lug looks for an opening to infiltrate the mansion. Inside, Lug reunites with Daya. Afterward, Daya's father introduces himself as Dimmer Vicone. As they prepare towards a way forward, Lug plants a corpse of a girl in order to fake Daya's death. He then tells her to shout through the window before he carries out the plan. When she moves and opens the window, Lug gets a feeling of danger in the form of imminent death. In that instance, Gibalg is fired so it wreaks havoc on the battlefield. As it heads for Daya, Lug saves her in time. As soon as Lug sights the hero who has immense mana, he quickly conjures a cannon that he fires at him. It causes a massive explosion, but the hero has already recovered and is hyped for more. The hero begins activating his berserk skill which boosts his already overwhelming strength. He then offers a duel in exchange, he won't kill anyone else. So Lug decides to battle him. Although Daya fears for his safety, he reveals he would be fighting as an assassin and not a knight. Along with Dimmer, Lug negotiates the conditions for the duel, so he makes the hero promise to withdraw his forces if he is defeated. With that settled, he stalls for time by asking the hero some trivial questions. As the hero charges his weapon to fight, Lug reveals they should begin the duel when the coin he tosses falls. He then throws it up but before it lands, there's an explosion. Lug reveals he sent a missile into space beforehand. He has been planning on ways to make this succeed ever since so he used the coin to direct the missile's landing. The blast from the explosion is so massive that it almost kills Lug who casts it. After the battle, Lug arrives home with Daya alongside him, and the anime to an end.